Good evening. Welcome to Expat Insights. I'm your host, Raju Mandhian. Here at Expat Insights, we take external views of internal successes by foreigners and expats who have made Philippines their home and are doing good in the Philippines, either socially or in business. Tonight, we have two guests and we have two segments. The first segment is we'll talk about the Pasig River with a foreigner who's been working at it. Her name is Lisa Kircher Lumbao, and she's been in this country for nearly 20 years. She's an environmentalist and works for AECOM USA. So welcome to Expat and Science, Ms. Lumbao. Thank you. Ms. Kircher Lumbao. So uh, tell us a bit about yourself. Well, I've been in the Philippines, like you said, almost 20 years. Yeah. I've been working in the environmental field the whole time. I, I love living in the Philippines. I love the lifestyle here, and I feel the work I'm doing is um, it's very rewarding, and I think um, you know, there's obviously a lot to do here. Um, and I just really enjoy the people, and I love scuba diving and traveling around the country. Are you ever going to go back to home? Well, I go back for vacation and Are you ever for going work. To go back I for go good? back to visit. <laughs> Are you ever going to go back for good? I hope not. I, I really love living here. From? Minnesota. Which is like? So it's in the north, bordering Canada, so we get a lot of snow and cold weather. So I love the weather here, that it's nice and warm. What brought you here for the first time? To the Philippines. Well, I married a Filipino when I was still in college. So as soon as I finished graduate school, we moved here in 1992. This was in your hometown, Minnesota? Uh, your yes, state? yes. Wow, so he brought you here. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Uh, so uh, you work for AECOM and yeah. you do a lot of work for the Pasig River. So can you describe your work before you took up the Pasig project? Like what's your profession? And what do you specialize in? I understand you're also a graduate of Yale University. Yeah, when I was um, in school, I focused on forestry. So my first job here was a forestry project funded by USAID. Um, after I finished that, then I moved into uh, a job where I handled what we call the brown sector of environmental um, issues. The brown sector is all the dirty things like uh, air pollution, water pollution, solid waste. Uh, so I worked on that uh, for several years. I was basically helping U.S. companies do business in the Philippines, uh, specifically focused on Asian Development Bank. Um, so there's a brown sector, is there a green and a yellow? There's a green and, and, a, blue. Green, a, green and a blue. Green green is more of the forestry issues, okay. yeah. um, land use, and blue is uh, marine issues, oh, oceans. Oh, uh, yeah. aquamarine yes, issues. So right. Green is Coastal forest, resources. brown is city, urban right. areas, yeah. and blue would be the water. Right, coastal wow. management. So yeah, then I got into the brown sector and um, then, I don't know, about 2003, I started focusing more on wastewater. Uh, the Philippines passed the Clean Water Act in 2004. And the Clean Water Act in 2004? Right. Was it the same time that the Clean Air Bill was passed? No, the uh, Clean Air was earlier. Earlier. Yeah, well, what, clean water what are the elements after. of both, both of these bills? Well, the Clean Air Act, um, one important Part of that law was uh, banning incineration. So uh, in many countries, they get rid of their garbage through incineration, right, but that's right, banned right, under right. the Clean Air Act. Plastic waste. Um, yeah. But you know, also the smoke belching. Um, they're supposed to be pulling over vehicles, and we have the emissions testing um, right. program. Right. That didn't happen before 2000 in this country. People didn't care how much smoke belching happened. So the people we see on the street is post. Right. Air right. So, but you know, there's been some difficulties in the implementation of that. But it's uh, improving. Now, um, you, you have done many projects besides the Pasig River. Uh, what were your earlier projects before we come to discussing? Well, the, the project that I'm Im implementing now is funded by USAID. That's this US, is the Pasig one. U.S. Agency for International no, Development. But the is project is called the Philippine Sanitation Alliance. And within that project, um, we're doing this small effort to uh, improve the Pasig River. It's funded by USAID and Rotary International. No, my question is that prior to picking, uh, taking up the PASIC project, mm -hmm. uh, what other projects did you start and fulfill or accomplish? Well, as part of um, the Philippine Sanitation Alliance, we're working with cities and water utilities all around the Philippines on sanitation and wastewater projects. So the main thing that we're doing is um, uh, improving the management of septic tanks because about 80% of the Philippines, uh, Filipino households have septic tanks, mm. but they're not... Uh, they're not emptied on a regular basis. According to the... Uh, <laughs> all right, go on. It's not yeah, I mean, septic, <laughs> septic tanks is not um, yeah. really an appetizing topic, but uh, they're very important because, um, you know, all the, the wastewater coming out of them is going into the rivers. Right, right. Going into our groundwater, and yeah. it causes uh, very high levels of 
disease and pollution affects our economy. Pe fishermen can't catch as many fish because the water is very polluted uh, so in with terms our wastewater. Of this, is, this is city planning. This is urban planning. This is a question of urban planning. So in terms of, uh, this is just a question that comes to my mind. So the older the city, the m more underdeveloped a country, the bigger the problems they have in their sanitation systems. Is that correct? Well, so throughout the whole Philippines, um, there hasn't been really any investment in wastewater in and that sanitation. that underground infrastructure, yeah. Yeah, like building sewerage systems. Back during the American administration, there were some sewer pipes laid in some parts of Manila, in Zamboanga right. City, and in yeah. Baguio. Yeah. Um, and those systems are still in place. And really, there was no investment in sewer systems, you know, building the sewer pipes and the wastewater treatment plants uh, since that time. So now in Metro Manila, the two water concessionaires, Manila Water and Manila Water, are building some sewerage systems. Manila is Manila Water is a Yala company. Right. So and my Manila is another. I don't remember what the okay. company yeah. is, but yeah. they basically have split Metro Manila into two zones: the mm -hmm. west zone and the east zone. And those two companies are now making um, large investments in wastewater treatment, sewage treatment. Uh, Nawasa is gone. Nawasa, right. the old it's water system. It's MWSS now, yeah. Metro Metropolitan. So water now the people storage. who provide water are becoming responsible for getting it out of the cities. So right. That's a good thing. Right. That's a good thing. So that's really um, the the solution to the pollution of the Pasig River is really the Incoming the wastewater water treatment and systems. Outgoing. The wastewater treatment systems that Manila Water and Manila Water wow. are building. So our project is just doing a very small um, part of that bigger effort. Mm -hmm. um, we are working with Manila Water up in Quezon City um, to support the building of with a wastewater, Manila, right? Uh, yeah. Supporting of a wastewater treatment yeah. system there, yeah. mainly focusing on the garbage because uh, the system that they're putting in uses the existing drainage yeah. system, mm -hmm. and that gets very easily clogged up with garbage. Mm -hmm. So that costs them a lot of money to take all that garbage out. So we're doing um, solid waste management uh, garbage management programs there. These are, we'll, we gotta take a break yeah, for commercials and then we'll come back and now get a big picture and a detailed picture from you about what's happening with the Pasig River. Okay. So uh, that's Lisa <laughs> kircher Lumbao. Stay with us, we're talking about the Pasig River. We'll be back uh, after a few minutes. I'm your host, Roger yeah, stay with us. Welcome back to Expert in Science. I'm your host, Roger Martin. We're talking to Lisa kircher Lumbao. And she's going to tell us the inside story on the Pasig River right now. Lisa, so give us a big picture on where the Pasig River is today in terms of cleanliness. Well, there have been a lot of efforts in the past to yeah. clean up the river. Um, yeah. There was a big focus about uh, 15 years ago on reducing the wastewater coming from factories. Or and that domestic was quite Well, mostly on factories. And yeah. that was quite successful to mm. move uh, many of the factories away from the, the banks of the yeah. river. Yeah. Um, so the amount of industrial pollution entering the river was reduced, yeah. but that left the domestic sources. Domestic meaning coming from all of our houses, yeah. our um, big houses and small commercial houses. malls. Yeah. Um, so that is the biggest source of pollution right now in mm. for the Pasig River, and Metro Manila as a whole has very little wastewater treatment in terms of sewer pipes leading to you treatment plants. That. Yeah, right, yeah. maybe 20 percent of the population has access or is connected to a sewerage system. A formal sanitation system. Right, which is yeah. sewer pipes leading to a treatment plant. Oh, 20% of all Metro Manila population? Yes. Oh so the God. rest of us are using septic tanks, and septic tanks don't provide full treatment. So the water coming out of the septic tank is still very highly polluted and mm -hmm. ends up in our canals, esteros, and oh, the Pasig geez. River yeah, and Manila yeah, Bay. Yeah, yeah. So it's a very huge amount of pollution. And as I mentioned, um, both Manila wait, Water... Wait, may, may I just... So 20% of the sewerage system runs it from the homes into the ocean? Straight no, into, into a treatment plant. So for example... Plant. The rest of it is just septic dumped tanks. away into the oceans and the rivers, 80% right. of it. Right. Uh, septic tanks do provide a little bit of treatment and yeah. they do separate the solids from the liquids. Septic, they septicize it. Right. Yeah. So um, an another effort that is um, taking place with Manila water and Manila water is to empty those septic tanks on a regular basis right. and take that material to a treatment plant. Okay. So at least the so septic instead tanks... Of, uh, instead of pipes, this is physically done, like the garbage right. trucks. Okay. Right. Um, and so at least the septic tanks can do their job better if they're yeah. maintained properly. Yeah. But septic tanks still are not full treatment. So they're building, both Manila water and Manila water are building treatment plants that will treat all the water coming out of the septic tanks as well, mm -hmm. just using the existing drainage system. Mm -hmm. So okay. once that's done, maybe in uh, 20 years or so from now, all of Metro Manila will be 
cleaner. Um, covered in terms of having these treatment plants, well, wastewater treatment plants. What if the population grows? What if building grows? What if there are more uh, structures coming well, we up? We just have to keep that? building more treatment plants. So are there new laws being put in to manage these new constructions, new buildings, and new households? Uh, well, that they should, when they build a new building, they, they should put in full treatment when they're doing the construction. Not that in law, septic tanks. In not putting in septic tanks, putting mm -hmm. in a full wastewater treatment plant. Those laws what is the difference between uh, septic, the septic tank, tank is only just first chemical, stage. Yeah, yeah. There are basically two stages in wastewater treatment. Mm -hmm. um, the septic tank only performs the first stage. Mm -hmm. So if you only have a septic tank, you don't have full treatment. Right. So now, uh, Pasig, but the Pasig River has cleaned up a bit because you moved out the industrial waste, right. and now there's management management being done by Manila Water and Manila. Right. But how, uh, in terms of uh, ranking from one to ten, how much has it cleaned up? How how <laughs> What's your success level? Well, like I said, we're just getting started, um, mm. and it'll take about 20 years for Manila Water and Manila Water to build all the treatment plants that are needed. So we're at the very early stages of that process. So if I had to say from 1 to 10, maybe 3 or something. That's it. That's but there's it. an effort um, headed, uh, there's a Bantai Kalikasan, which is uh, Kalikasan. It's an NGO. Mm -hmm. um, Organized by the ABS-CBN Foundation, yeah, and they New have Lopez's, they yeah. have started a movement called Kapit Bisig Sa Ilog Pasig, and they have been focusing on uh, Paco Estero, yeah. trying to clean that up. That's just one portion of the whole river, right? And yeah. as uh, part to support that, um, we got a grant from USAID and Rotary International. So money comes from USAID and Rotary. And to do muscle, one part of yeah? that project, we're working in Santa Ana. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with Santa Ana? Santana is where the fire station is and the racetrack is. Yeah, it used yeah. to be. Um, used they to just be. closed the racetrack. But it's a, a beautiful area along the Pasig River, very historic. It's one of the oldest Manila boat parts farm. of Manila, right. Yeah. So there's a public market there. And with this grant money, we have built a wastewater treatment plant mm. for that public market so mm. that the wastewater, because before the public market only had a septic tank. So now it has a full treatment system. So the water coming out into the Pasig River now is, is clean water. So Santa Ana is one neighborhood. Then there's Mandaluyong, there's Santa Mesa, there's Quezon City, mm -hmm. and there's probably some areas up in Antipolo. Right. So we're hoping that this wastewater treatment plant for the Santa Ana public market will be replicated in other It'll become a parts model of the for city. Right. Oh. But um, we also worked very closely with MMDA. They're the ones who actually constructed the treatment plant. And then yeah. we worked very closely, of course, with the city of Manila. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping with the experience that they have now that they can put these systems in for other public markets. So it's a small effort, but it contributes to the, the reducing the amount of pollution going into the Pasig River. So uh, we know where the money is coming from. Who's putting in the technical energy and the muscle? Who's providing well, the technical side came from, from um, our, my project. From company? So are you the only company? USAID. Are you the only company who's doing the physical work, or there are many more? No, uh, with Manila Water and Manila Water, they're building all these treatment plants. Oh, so, they so they're hiring, their own, uh, and, and they're hiring companies to oh, design and build planting. those treatment plants. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, there's there's hope. It's uh, it's improving, and there are a lot hope. of efforts uh, being undertaken. But 20 years seems like a long time. Yes, it, it will take a long time to to treat. You know, this is a city of 15 million people. Uh, so to treat all the wastewater being generated by all those people, it takes a lot of treatment plants. Some people assume, uh, I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, some people assume three, five years. What's your uh, position on that? Well, like I said, it's going to take about 20 years to build all these treatment plants. Yeah. So we really can't see much of an improvement. No, where are um, they coming from when they say three to five years the Pasig River will be clean and shiny? What's, I'm their, not what's their assumption? What are their I'm assumptions? not sure, but you know, part of it is making it look better, and that's important. Uh, right. Removing the solid waste, so yeah. that has been done um, on the surface. That has been done in some areas. Like I said, we're working in uh, Quezon mm -hmm. City, and Kapit Bisig Sa Ilog Pasig is working in Paco to handle the solid waste, yeah. and that's also important for um, just the flooding issue. You know, when we had the Undoy floods, mm. uh, a lot of the flooding was caused by garbage. And uh, the floods that, or the rain and the floods that we just had last week, um, yeah. I heard that Falcon. the Wun yeah. yeah, the Winton Lupa city mayor said that he he attributed the fact that they had very little flooding in Winton Lupa to the fact that they have a ban on plastics, yeah. and that they're I doing am a much actually happy about it. Yeah, Plastic they're doing a much one of better. My pet peeves. I hate plastics. So in yeah. McDonald's and Winton Lupa, they don't give you straws and bags. Right, yeah, right. So they're doing a much better job of solid waste management in in, in Winton Lupa. Lupa, right? And How about so that's. Marikina? Um, Marikina, we've actually been working with them um, together with Manila Water to improve the septic tank desludging program. Mm -hmm. um, and they're also doing uh, good work on solid waste management as well. These are a little bit uh, discussion on people issues, no? Uh, 
15, 20 years ago when Kapit Bisig Sailo Pansi was called Piso Parasa Pansi, when Bing Ramo started this project. No? There were lots of people living by the river. Yeah? What happened to them and what have, what have the people involved done about them? What are their situations? The people factor in this whole story. Yeah, well, I'm um, a little bit familiar with an ADB, Asian Development Bank funded project uh, that worked with the community these living Prior along the to Pasig River. Doing, yeah? Um, yeah, and they really worked on community development, solid waste Resetting management, them, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, I think they um, did some resettlement. But um, the resettlement issue is a tricky one, of course, because... Um, it involves emotions. Well, and it's people. Yeah. It involves people. But I think um, Ondoy was sort of a wake-up call in terms of the safety issue yeah. as well, that it's yeah. not really safe for people to be living along the banks of the river. But then we need to find places where they can move. Are you conversant with what has happened to these people who have moved on from Pasig? Um, Where are they and are they Well, I know happy? along the Paco Estero, a lot of the people there have moved um, to Kalawan in Laguna. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that there are a lot of programs um, to provide livelihood. Kalawan and Laguna? Mm -hmm, yeah. To provide livelihood um, for them and homes yeah. and electricity and schools. So that's an ongoing effort. Now, uh, what? Uh, now, two questions. Number one. What forces are helping and supporting you? What other NGOs besides Rotary are helping you now in their own small way currently? Who well, are they? We have a partner in Santa Ana called the Lola Grande Foundation. Lola Grande? Yeah. <laughs> Big Lola? Well, it's um, a family there, the Lechauco family that has their Lechauco grandmother. Family? Mm -hmm. yeah. Their grandmother um, was called Lola Grande and she did a lot of work for the community. She really... Um, oh, I wish we had a picture of Lola Grande. <laughs> <laughs> I have a picture of her. Um, so that's a community-based um, NGO that yeah. has been working on heritage-based tourism. They have a beautiful old church there. In right Santana. in Santana? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I you should visit there. sometime. Have yeah. you been there? Yeah, well, many times. So I've been working there. Yeah, um, so there really are people on the ground doing yeah. the day-to-day -day work um, yeah. of that project. And I heard that World Bank will be uh, doing some uh, project to improve Manila Bay. Yeah. You, you know, if you're familiar with the Supreme Court ruling to clean up Manila Bay. No, I yes, wish the Supreme, one, the Supreme Court not just has ordered. Manila Bay, but Cavite, Laguna, right. all the way up to Batangas, it should be cleaned up. Cavite was such a mess one time I went there. Well, there was plastic and dead animals yeah. and tires and rubber out so there. a lot of work to be done. But the Supreme Court has ordered the Philippine government to clean up Manila Bay, and World Bank will be supporting that through a project. And we hope that the efforts in Santa Ana and the efforts of this NGO that we've been working with can be replicated in other areas. 20 years seems a long time. Yeah. I, mean, I, I, can't, I can't blame you on behalf of the Filipino uh, population, but what can the man on the street do? What can citizens and people on the street do? What pe people in homes do? What can they do? Well, what is possible? Well, proper management of solid waste. Like you know, at home? At segregate home. your wastes. Right. Ha recycle what can be recycled. Sell your newspapers to the newspaper guy. You know, you have junk dealers that can collect all of these recyclables. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, uh, when it's your turn to have your septic tank emptied by Manila Water or uh -huh. Manila How Water, should that be done? every five to seven years, I believe they're doing it. So when you get a knock on your door and they, they do said, it so we don't have to right. pay or not? Well, it's included in your water bill. Oh, and, okay, um, okay. So just cooperating with that when they come knocking on your door that you welcome them in and have them dislodge your septic tank uh, is important. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, just basic good citizenship, I guess, is um, so no what needs to stuff, be done. So no stuff, no buying plastic, right. not many packaging. So right. Bring your no own bag to the yeah. store. No. <laughs> yeah. uh, Bring your own bag to the store. Currently, what is happening on the Pasig River? I see there are ferries going back and forth and people are commuting on the Pasig River. And this was part of your doing, or somebody else does this? No, it's the PRRC, I believe, that's running that. The Pasig River Rehabilitation Commission has the ferry service running. Yeah. And we've taken it several times um, as nice. part of our, we'll bring visitors to our project. Process, yeah. <laughs> but they've been very supportive of our project as well. When we inaugurated uh, the project, we had yeah. a, a little conference on the ferry as we went up and down the river, so that was fun. So it's, I'd recommend it to people, especially if you have visitors coming, take them on a tour of the Pasig River. 20 pesos, 50 stop pesos. In, yeah, stop in Santa Ana, have a yeah. walking tour of Santa Ana. So if I, I want to commute, I can commute from Santa Ana up to Mandaluyong, that's it? Or there's more? How I'm long? I'm not the really The river not sure, itself is 27 kilometers yeah. or something, no? Yeah, I'm not sure what the whole route, but you can just go online, type in, you know, Pasig River Ferry, and you'll get the whole, s the route and the schedule. And Great. Congrats on what you're doing, Lisa. You're doing a wonderful thing for this country. And I hope the country recognizes what you're doing. No? My question to you is, uh, 
something about your personal life. Uh, what keeps you here? What about the Philippines keeps you here, Lisa? Well, like I said, I love the people. I love the lifestyle here. The people are very well, warm and friendly. Lifestyle's good in and Chile. Lifestyle's great <laughs> in Switzerland. It's really nice. Yeah, I love the Philippines. We love the Philippines. What's 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 your dream for the Philippines? What's in your mind's eye for the Philippines? Well, since I work in the environmental field, you know, it's clean environment, uh, which is good for the people. Um, it's all about you know raising people's uh, living standards. Yeah. You know, having a clean me environment. Give a picture of Philippines 2020, <laughs> 20, Proper uh, garbage, segregating garbage, proper management of uh, wastewater, clean Pasig River, that's clean it, that's air it. for all clean of our air. children to breathe. And you have uh, children? Yes. How I, have many a, they? I have a 10-year-old and a 6-year-old. Oh, so they can go biking wherever they want to go. They can jog in the streets of Makati. Is that a dream? Yeah. That's my dream, too. Lisa, thank you very much for being thank on Expat Insights. If there's anyone you want to thank or acknowledge or leave a message for people who help you, this is the moment for you and the camera is yours. Thank you so much for being here and sharing the story of the Pasig River. Thanks. I One guess in, in terms of the Pasig River project, it's the MMDA, the City of Manila, Lola Grande, Rotary International, Rotary District 3810, all of our partners on the project. Salamat po. Thank you. Abu <laughs> Hai. That's Lisa Kircher Lumbao, and she was telling us about Pasig River. Please stay with us. We'll take a break. And after the break, we'll come back and talk to a lady who's also been living in the Philippines for nearly as long as Lisa. And she's a harpist, so she plays good music for the Philippines. Stay with us. I'm your host, Ranjo Mantian. This is Expanded.